Welcome to WDRB Media, the voice of the community, bringing you double the information and double the inspiration. You have tuned into Better, Better Together, Together with Alexis B. Wolf and Sandy Renner. This is my friend Sandy Renner of Sandy Renner Ministries. Hi. And I am Alexis V. Wolf of, of the Fiery Sword Global Ministries. And we are back today, Sandy, to give another message that we pray will be inspirational yes. to the people who are here. Yes. So we've been talking about killing sacred cows, which we will probably get back to that. Yes, but there's um, but, still you know, cows to be killed. There are still cows to be killed. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Um, but we, we're going to take a little shift, right, today? Yes, we are. We're going to take a little shift, and we're going to talk about some things. We're at the end of 2020. Um, we're in the Christmas season, and there's a lot going on. And um, we really want to address what do we do when things don't look the way we think they ought to look or when they should look like that. Exactly. When we are in distress in our homes, in our governments, in our finances, Everything you can imagine, because listen, people have had struggles for as long as there have been people on the earth since sin entered. So this is nothing new, but we really want to address some things of how do we walk in faith when faith seems to elude us? How do we walk in faith when hope seems to elude us? How do we walk in faith when joy is nowhere to be found? So yes, it has been a tough, tough year. It has been a hard year. Um, there have been so many good things, though. There have Absolutely. been so many brilliantly beautiful things that have happened in 2020, so we don't want to get so pigeonholed into it. Only bad things have happened. Absolutely. We ha have to remember the good we stuff. Ha that's right. And I've even heard of people like, well, oh, I'm, sc I'm scared to tell somebody that something good happened to me. I'm like, please tell them something tell good happened them. to we you. We need some good news. Let us rejoice in the Lord God Almighty because good things are always happening wrapped around Absolutely. chaos and confusion. And I will tell you, at the beginning of this year, at the beginning of 2020, if I have seen 11, 11 once, I have seen it 50,000 times. Um, and 11, uh, especially 11, 11, talking about that that chaos and confusion that comes with the number 11. And for those of you who aren't number people, just look in the Bible. It's, it's very clear. Um, but the, the number 11 is wrapped around chaos yes. and destruction and confusion. And I mean, I even went back and looked up every chapter 11 of the entire Bible and every verse 11 of every chapter 11. And it's the same. It's There was always disaster. And so when we see things like this, this is not for us to be discouraged. This is for us to say, okay, God, if you are preparing me for that, which is going to happen. And even in the midst of that happening, I thank you that because you're showing me, you're also going to show me how to navigate yes. the chaos and the confusion and the distress and the destruction yes. because it is happening. It is happening. Um, for me personally, um, we've been dealing with a lot of death and a lot of sickness in our uh, in our circle. Mm -hmm. um, many of them family, some of them just on the outside of family. And it has been very, very hard. I mean, for me personally, it has been extremely difficult saying yes. if you've been dealing with some things you know sure. other people listen we, we minister to people all the time we are surrounded by people who are struggling and people of faith people yes. of strong faith absolutely um that are really just having some difficulties because as they pray as we have prayed as sandy and i have prayed and we haven't seen things come about the way we believe the lord has led us and That's so right. that that leads for an interesting conversation, yeah. Sandy. Can I expound a minute on the number thing yeah. briefly? Um, for those of you who are not familiar, numbers are very important in, in yeah. the Bible. Uh, you just think about the number 40. Go look in your Old Testament, see how many times, or even new, and see how many times you see the number 40, mm -hmm. or the number 7, or the number 2. The three. I mean, and three, three and 30. Those mm -hmm. are significant numbers, but every number is important in biblical understanding. Yeah. So 11, like she said, it, it most times mean chaos, destruction, confusion, those kind mm -hmm. of things. But let me tell you something. 11 comes between 10 and 12. And the number 10 stands for testimony. Mm -hmm. And the number 12 stands for divine order. Folks, hold on to your testimony in the middle of chaos because divine order is coming. Amen. I just want to give you a little hope there. Mm -hmm. okay? mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that was short. <laughs> yeah, for, for Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> we like to have a good time here. Listen, yes. if you guys have just tuned into Better Together. We, Sandy and I have been doing this for a while. Mm -hmm. We've been ministers for a very, very long time. And we love to revel in the goodness and the joy Absolutely. of the Lord. We like to have a good time because, listen, uh, 
it's it's just good to be able to rejoice, to laugh. Yeah. Laughter makes the heart merrier. And it's good medicine. It's Proverbs good says it's good medicine. medicine. Yes, if you want bad news, just turn on the boob tube, as uh -huh. we used to call it, yeah. or the internet, or whatever you get your news from. And I'm telling There's you, you're going to end up depressed if you don't really stand firm in your testimony of Christ. That's so right. we do try to laugh and cut up, we not because we take this lightly mm. what's going on and what everyone is going through we're all trying to end it together mm. folks but mm. laughter is good medicine and i tell people this even though i'm very prophetic and she's very prophetic we believe in the prophetic and prophecy however i've had friends say Cindy, i'm just so weighed down i said will you just cut all that stuff off go find something funny go look, watch Andy Griffin, I Love Lou, some of the old sitcoms that you just laugh. Which are the best. Because it <laughs> really will help you through some tough times. Yeah. So, again, yeah, you're right, Sandy. It's like we we are very, very serious about the word, but we love to have a good time. Absolutely. So that is what... That is the essence of the joy of the Lord, that we can laugh at the days of adversity. We can laugh at the days ahead because God doesn't, God is in us and we are one with him. So, so can we. God has an intense sense of humor. <laughs> he really did. I mean, look... <laughs> We don't have to say no yep, word. Yeah, yeah, me and Sandy, man, it's a crazy thing. All right, so here's what I want to do um, today. I want to go to Hebrews 11, and I'll tell you, Sandy, when I returned back to Christ 20 Ooh. years ago, Hebrews is one. The Hebrews, Deuteronomy, there are several like key places God took me, but Hebrews 11 ministers to me probably more profoundly than anything. It all ministers to me. Believe me, it's the word of God. Yes. But Hebrews is something that, especially if you are discouraged or if you're feeling like you want to fall away from God, or if you're like, God, where are you? Hebrews 11. Amen. Hebrews 11. All right, so I'm just going to read some of this. It's, it's kind of long, and I don't want to take up a lot of time reading it, because by all means, please just go read the whole book of Hebrews. Yeah. Heck, just go read the whole Bible. <laughs> yeah, <it is. laughs> pick your Bible. book. That's, that's right. But Hebrews is about faith. So Hebrews 11, I'm going to start with verse 1, but we're going to skip around a bit, so I'll probably skip chunks uh, for the sake of time. Hebrews 11, and this is in the New American Standard Bible. That is my favorite. Now, faith is the certainty of things hoped for. A proof of things not seen, for by it the people of old gained approval. Wow. Now, this is a profound statement in itself, which mm -hmm. I would highly recommend you going back to this, circle back around to this and go, God, what is faith? I had I heard a preacher one time many, many years ago, and he said it like this, um, that when he was young, they didn't have a lot of money. I cannot remember. I wish I could remember this past name, but it was a long time ago. But he said, here's faith. He said, here's the analogy God gave me. He said, my mama would, he said, I would go in the house and say, I'll be outside playing. I'm going out and say, mom, mom, I'm hungry. And she's like, okay. And he said, I would look at the cupboard and there was just like flour. There was just really no food. He said, there was a little bit of this, a little bit of that. She's like, son, go outside. And when you come back, when I call you, there will be food. He said, but there was no tangible food right. at his access. He said, and so when I came back, she had taken the flour and she had taken the eggs and she had taken whatever ingredients. I don't cook, I don't know what goes in a biscuit, but whatever he said, he named them all. And he's like, and there were these fresh hot biscuits. He said, that was the hope of things, or, or my faith was in the hope of things unseen. Yeah. He said, because I could not see the biscuits. When I opened that cabinet door, there was just a little bit of this and a little bit of that. He saw but the my mom said, go out. And when you come back in, there will be biscuits. And, of course, he told the story much better than I because it was his revelation. But I love that. But it's like God can take things that make no sense and make something so magnificent. And it will fill Absolutely. our bellies. And so we need not lose hope just because we can't see it. That's right. You know, a lot of people, the, the earth's way of thinking is seeing is believing. God's way is believing is seeing. Because when we set our, our gaze on Christ and we can believe, we will begin to see. Absolutely. Okay, that's kind of cool in itself. All that's right, so let me move cool. on. All right, so when we're talking about faith, we're back in um, Hebrews 11. Verse 3 says, By faith we, underst <clears throat> me, we understand that the world has been created by the word of God so that what is seen has not been made out of things that are visible. Mm. By faith, Abel offered to God a better sacrifice than Cain, through which he was, a he was attested to be righteous, God testifying about his gifts, and through faith, though he is dead, 
he still speaks. Mm -hmm. And then it goes on about Enoch and how Enoch was taken up. Verse 6 says, and without faith, this is very, very, very vital to your walk with God and stay in the course and not falling away in doubt. Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, and without faith, it is impossible to please him. For the one who comes to God must believe that he exists and that he proves to be one who rewards those who seek him. Yeah. And then it goes on about Noah. But, I, you know, I love that. When people come to me, Sandy, and I know people go, go to you and they say the same thing. Oh, I'm just so afraid I'm going to disappoint God. I hope so. And I don't mean to make fun of people, but sometimes it gets a little redundant when they're like, I'm just, I don't want to make a move because I'm afraid I'm not going to please God. Well, don't make a move in faith and you will not please God. You are, you can be assured of that. That's right. It is faith that causes us to move in a fashion that doesn't make sense to anybody That's else. Right. Faith is that place that says, God, I believe you. I, I have faith in you. And I trust you. That trust is to me the pinnacle of where we ought to be with God. And that trust saying, I not only believe, that's, that gets us into heaven, right? That gets us to mm -hmm. our introduction to Christ. Uh, and then we get to that place where we can really um, have faith in him. Okay, I have faith in this or that. But that place of trust, and that's just my interpretation. That's how I see that. But it's like, I trust you. That is a level of faith that is unparalleled. Like we, these people of old understood that and very Absolutely. few really get that. But when it talks about uh, it's impossible to please God, if you don't want to please God, continue to walk in faithlessness because you will be sure to displease God. But That's if you right. take a step of faith, you will please God. Even if you stumble and even if you make a mistake, Absolutely. when you are trusting God to make, some, listen, I have, and I'm not trying to talk about my stuff, but I have 25 published books. My first book came out and literally people were like, who are you to publish a book? Mm -hmm. You haven't been to seminary. You, I've, I've seen, I, I knew you when, you know, the whole, mm -hmm. I knew you when stuff. I've actually had people take my book, take it to the pastor, pick it apart because I was so unworthy to write a book. I now have 25 published books and I can't tell you how many times it's like, it doesn't make sense. I don't know who's reading my books. Maybe five people. I don't know or feel like that at the time. But my faith is that God is doing something in me and through me and that when I publish it, it will become something of worth at some point, even if nobody in my lifetime Absolutely. reads those books. That is faith. That's not a testament to me. That is a testament to God that when he speaks to me on faith, I'm doing what everyone else is like. What are you doing? that's faith and that pleases God even if I make mistakes along the way I love what my friend Scott says he said God will never be disappointed in you trying to obey him and failing he will not appreciate you never trusting him to try to step out on faith to step out on faith and as Peter did to step out on the and water and people ask me well what if I pray for so and so and they don't be healed and I said but what if they do but what if they don't? Mm -hmm. I said, but what if they do? Stick yeah. with the what if they do. Right. So anyway, let me move on because I could linger there a little while longer. Um, but I do. Oh, and it also says, and that he proves to be the one who rewards those who seek him. And so when we step out in faith, God is the rewarder, whether we see it on this side of heaven or the other. I want to skip down to, uh, because it talks about a lot more people. You can go back and read that. It talks about Sarah and Abraham. Mm -hmm. In verse 13. It reads, all these died in faith. Wow. One, it says they never lost their faith. No matter what obstacle they came against, no matter what came against them, they died in their faith. Thank God. It says, now listen to this, without receiving the promises. Mm -hmm. Now, this is very, very important. This is kind of where we're going. When we are listening to prophets when we ourselves are hearing from God I don't care where you get the word from God when you are following God and things in the earth things in your family things in your life are not going the way you have prayed when you when you know that you prayed in accordance to the spirit of God yeah. when you prayed for people to rise up in healing and they die when you pray to um just have a lot of money come in for whatever your needs and you don't see that money come in, mm -hmm. believe the promise. It says that these people died in faith without receiving the promises, but having seen and welcomed them from a distance and having confessed that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. For those who say such things make it clear 
that they are seeking a country of their own. We are talking about paradise with going to be with the Lord. Um, and indeed, if they had been thinking of that country which they left, they would have had they would have had an opportunity to, to return. And it just goes on. But listen, we need to understand that just because God gives you a promise and you don't see it this side of heaven, if it doesn't turn out the way you think it should, if it doesn't happen in the time frame you think it should, you need to hold fast to your faith in Christ because he said, there, this is not your home. This earth is it's not, God, we're not God. from here. Now, I'm going to give my little sermon that I've okay. given a thousand times that when Christ came down, and he lived, and he died, and he rose again, and he ascended back into heaven. But before he did, he left us his spirit. When we receive Jesus Christ, we receive his spirit. He inserts himself in the top of your head. This is just my, my visual. He comes mm -hmm. into you. He doesn't do it this way, but in my visual. He goes to the top of our head, and he inserts himself like we are a glove to Jesus Christ. That's we right. become one with Christ. Which is why, this is a side note, I am not a daughter of God physically and genetically. I am a daughter. But spiritually, I am a son of God Your because son. I am dead. Christ is alive. Christ is the son. Christ lives in me. He is from heaven. Therefore, right. I am from heaven. That's right. When I am renewed, when I am regenerated from death unto life and Christ comes into me, I become a son because the son is in me. He is from heaven. Therefore, this is not my earth. This is why it says we are exiles. Yeah. We have we need to say we have been exiled to earth. Right. And we look at it like that. So I am here for such a time as this, but I am not from the earth. Physically, yes. My spirit, no, because it's been renewed in Jesus That's Christ. Right. And so if I don't get the promises I am expecting on the earth, I will receive a greater promise once I have left this earth. And that sustains me. That may not sustain you. That sustains me, Sandy. Yes, it does. Because I'm not from here. So if I don't get everything I think I should, even if I'm praying in accordance to Christ, these people prayed in accordance to Christ. I think yes. about Stephen. I know you've got something to say, but I think about no, Stephen. When Stephen was stoned to death, Al, he had spoken the word. He said, this is what happened. And he recapped to the people what had happened in earlier days. And he was telling them, you know, whatever. We could go back to Stephen in Acts chapter 7. You could read all about Stephen. But they stoned him to death. Christ did not raise him from the dead. Okay. Christ didn't even stop him from being stoned. He gave up his life. But I tell you what was so magnificent within that. Stephen said, forgive them. Yes, Do not did. let this be against them for doing this to me. He was a representation of Christ. Yes, he was. Except Christ rose from the dead and Stephen didn't accept. I mean, spiritually he did. Uh, but Christ physically rose from the dead. But, you know, everything... It, not everyone is going to be healed the way we think they should be healed. That's Not right. everyone is going to rise from the dead the way we think they should rise from the dead. Do I believe in healing? Yes. Yeah. I have experienced it. I have prayed for it. I've seen it. I've witnessed it firsthand. I have seen physical healing come to people, Sandy, and so yes. have you. It's true I, because this word says it's and true. And it says it's true. And Whether addition, we experience it or not. That's absolutely true. But we have even experienced it. What, yes, a, bonus, what a bonus. That's a gift. Blessing. Thank you, Jesus. But when we pray for someone to be raised from the dead, and we are praying in faith, and we are praying in belief and trust, and all of that rolled in together, and we are looking to God. I tell people I would rather pray for that to happen and it not happen, having released that person to God, that's than right. to do nothing and always wonder, could they have raised from the dead, or could they have been healed from their sickness had I prayed? That's exactly right. Well, didn't and you have something to say on that? You no, know, that's what we will answer for. Yes. How obedient are we to the word of God? God says pray. Pray for those who are sick. Raise the dead. Heal the leper. Well, he would have told us we could do it if he was not going to empower us. And I will say this about faith. People say, well, I just don't have enough faith. You have as much faith as anybody else. You have as much faith as Abraham had. You have as much faith as Billy Graham had. We're all given a measure of faith. Mm -hmm. We all have faith. It is what we do with it. You have to exercise your faith. It doesn't just grow on its own, but you have it because the Bible says that Jesus is the beginner. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen. Really, our faith is Jesus Christ. So if you have Jesus, have faith. Well, that's what I say all the time. It's like if Christ is your life, if you're dead and he's alive and he is your life, he has full faith in the yes. Father's and the Holy Spirit. So if you have Christ and Christ has you, it's in there. You just have to tap into it. That's it's what we feed. That's exactly what right. we feed. 
And the only reason something may not work is because we may not just have full understanding of the fullness mm-hmm. of it. You know, just because it don't happen the way we think it should right. happen or the way we want it to happen, it doesn't mean you were a failure. And it certainly can never mean that God has right. failed us. That's right. God cannot fail us. But what it does mean is we do not understand, have full understanding. We don't have the full picture. We just don't. Right. That's why this is so encouraging to me, Sandy, because when I read that these powerhouses of God, I mean powerhouses of God did not receive their promise. I want to go further into Hebrews, if I may. We have a few minutes. Um, We go down, Let's, because again, Hebrews 11 talks about a lot of really amazing people who served Christ and in full faith. Let's go down to... One moment. Sorry for the pause. Okay, um, down to verse 35. Let's go here. Um, in Hebrews 11, verse 35, it reads, Women received back their dead by mm-hmm. resurrection. So but even before that verse, it talks about all these amazing things that happened, these miraculous things that happened. Women received back their dead by resurrection, and others were. So it goes straight from some women received their children back right into, and others were tortured, tortured. not accepting their release. <clears throat> so that they might obtain a better resurrection. In other words, they could have been set free, but because they were not going to deny Christ, they That's went right. ahead and said, go ahead and kill me. It's, it's okay. That they did not accept their release so that they might obtain a better resurrection, which is what happens upon a physical death. Um, and others experienced mocking and flogging and further chains and imprisonment. Mm-hmm. They were stoned. They were sawn in two. Listen to this, people. This is real stuff. This is real, real, real stuff. They were sawn in two. They were tempted. They were put to death with the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to tell you what, Sandy. I'm going to start. Mine says ill-treated. Ill-treated. Verse 38 is what I prayed. I have been praying this, not as often, but that is my heart's desire. It says, people of whom... The world was not, not worthy. worthy. And when I got a hold of that 20 years ago, Sandy, it's like, I want, I want to be that person. I want to mm-hmm. be not for my glory, but for God's. A person where, the, where God will say the earth was not worthy of that person. Mm-hmm. Not because, mm-hmm. again, not because of me, but so that I can so glorify God that I will stand firmly, even if my life depends upon it. Yes. Period. These people, let me, I lost a place. Um, oh, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering in deserts, on mountains, in shelter, and sheltering in caves and holes in the ground. Verse 39, here it is Powerful. again. All these things, or, and all these, I'm sorry, and all these people, and all these having gained approval through their faith, listen, did not, not receive what was promised because God had provided something better. And it goes on. God has, we have to get our eyes off this earth. What does the word say? Set your mind on things above and not the things below. That's right. Align your mind with Christ. For those who are in Christ, you have the mind of Christ. Are you utilizing it? Are you thinking about heavenly things? Are you thinking beyond your circumstances? We can get so engulfed and scotch just encapsulated by these things of this earth that we can no longer see God. We are blinded by the trials of this earth. The word says on this earth, say it, you will have light affliction because compared to this, compared to all that is going to happen, God calls this light affliction. And it doesn't feel light. It feels right. heavy. It feels hard. But light affliction in comparison to the greatness of God and what we have coming. There is a promise greater than any promise we can ever have this side of heaven. There is something greater. So when we can say, okay, God, that didn't turn out the way I thought it would. Uh, yeah. I'm a little dismayed. Listen, Sandy and I go through this. We've been we there. We get great stuff and we just like, oh, that, I don't know how that happened. But God. When we align ourselves with our faith, our faith is that we know that we, we, in obedience to God, in humility to Christ, that we surrender ourselves to him, we pray in accordance to his will, we release the situation unto God, and we know in full confidence that however that pans out, that was God's will. Why? Because we release that person or that thing or that situation into the will of God. Therefore, we can sit back and rest going, I didn't like that. 
I don't necessarily understand it, but I concur. Absolutely. I can get in agreement with God because we release it to God. And in faith, we say, if I don't see the promise here, the promise, the greater promise is coming. That's if I say that something bigger and better is coming. So much more. Because that's how God is. <clears throat> you know, she said something, but God. We ministered to a woman uh, this past weekend at a conference. At least I did, and I think she prayed for her later. Uh, and she was on a walker. So her hip had given out. Her knees had given out. The other hip was causing some problems. Some other things was happening. A strong believer in Christ strong Jesus. Strong believer. Strong she and her faith husband both. Yes. And lives it. And she said, you know, she was telling me that, you know, I have this and I have that. And the Lord instructed me to tell her, it's okay to, because you're explaining your situation to someone. Just make sure you're not over rehearsing it. But if I had to say, you know, uh, Alexis, I, I have a, a pain in my hip. Do not leave it hanging there. Say, but God. Mm -hmm. Because the but negates all that other stuff and says God is more important. That's exactly so right. I'm sick today. I, I'm really struggling in my re relationship. Whatever your issue is. But when you finish, say, but, but God. God. You're <laughs> giving him the room to have the last say. You're mm -hmm. giving him lead way to continue your story yeah. in a better path. Yes, yes, but it yes. might not look like you wanted it to look. And it might not be <clears throat> showing the results that you thought you deserved or should get or wanted. That's right. But God. And you know, God gave me such a powerful word for that particular woman. And I don't want to share it because it is private. But, but you know, when we, <clears throat> excuse me, when we are saying, God, show me how to pray for this situation. Show me what's actually happening because sometimes it's sin. Sin can cause ailment yeah. but so many other things can cause ailment they can be battle wounds because listen when we are warriors for jesus christ and that conference we had what back in november that well there was some powerful word between you yes. and greg and some of the powerful other people words. that that were, were teaching that we have to understand that we are in a battle and when we stand for christ some of the stuff this flogging this mocking that Saw it and have it. I mean, even if it's not exactly that, in some way, there will be afflictions that come against us, and we need not be surprised. Why Absolutely. are we so shocked? Sandy, we are out of time. My goodness, we're we'll, getting We go. will continue this next week. But well, listen, if you have just tuned in, you are listening to Better Together, Two Girls in a Bible with Sandy Renner and Alexis V. Wolf. We are on every Sunday morning on WDRB at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We are also on YouTube. You can go to Sandy Renner Ministries. SandyBrenner.net. Um, you can also go to thefiery.sword.com. All of our videos, all of our shows are, are recorded. So we have them on video as well as to hear them on the radio. Listen, please come back. Next week, we're going to continue this conversation yes. about what it is to walk in faith. You guys be blessed. See you next week. Stay encouraged. Yes.